see what happens. We get and over we go. Girl. And she's doing her behaviour right now. This is what we played with the other day, and we're gonna I'm gonna say to her, we're not gonna start that shit. And we're going to behave. And go around as we're supposed to do. Yeah, good girl. Good job. Ah, back up, silly chicken. Let's see what she does when she gets to this point. Is she going to carry on or is she going to listen? She's going to listen. That's better. She's testing me already. So we have to walk around and around and around, so that's what we'll do. If that's what we've got to do, that's what we've got to do. Until she listens and she does it without drama and freely, then that's what we'll do. Right. And she's carrying on. She's decided she's going to carry on. So I'm going to say, right here, we're going to carry on, we're going to carry on there. We're going to push this back this way. And we're going to go this way. Because this is what she did once before with the stand. We're going to stand. She's got no reason to be shaking her head at flies because there are no flies on her. She's wearing a fly veil. There's no flies here. Ah! Ah! Walk on. Yeah, this is just really silly behaviour. I'm going to go the other direction now. Just watching her. Seeing what she's doing. She's trying to get out of me moving her. I'm saying, uh-uh. Stop. Uh, that's silly. Good girl. That's right. Good girl. Drop and relax. Good girl. So we're going to go walking first and foremost. No, we're going to walk. So we had her in a good way. Now she's carrying on again. So this is bullshit because she's trying to do the I'm going to shake my head and act as if there's something wrong. And there really isn't anything wrong at all she's just doing that to get me shaken off and yeah there's flies but that she's wearing a fly veil so there's no need for her to be carrying on like this ah don't walk on 
Now hold up. Just make sure there's nothing inside of her fly bale. I can't see anything in there. No, nope, there's nothing in her fly bale. She's just carrying on like a pork chop. She wants to carry on like a pork chop. Oh, there's one of bothering her nose. So that's probably not helping. But she's got to get used to this because uh, th th this place is full of flies in the summer. She's probably forgotten about that. She's probably forgotten that there's flies. Good girl. Ah. Trot. 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 Good. Trot. Good. Come on. Good. She knows I mean it. She's listening. And we're going to slow. We're going to go back the other direction now. She's going to listen to me. And she's carrying on like a pork chop for some weird reason. So this is, seems to be where she decides she's going to play up. Right here. And this is exactly where she reared up with the dentist. And so it's interesting to see why she's carrying on like this now. So we're going to start on the outside edge. We'll go on a inner circle. Ah, you're not going to do, get you're not going to get your way doing that. I can tell you that right now. Stop. Settle. Settle down. Now there's nothing wrong with her. She knows exactly how to walk around. She's just being a bit of a mentally deranged poppet right now. Let her keep doing this. She can do this all day. I can go all day like that. It's all right. And I'm going to get her to maneuver. Walking forward. Good girl. And she's not listening, so I'm going to get her to turn and walk forwards. Now the difference, the way I know this is behavioural, is because when as soon as I get past a certain point she's more than happy right more than happy to right good drop she doesn't want to go that way so we'll go the other way. Get up. And if she wants to carry on again, then what we'll do is we'll make it worth her while to carry on. Good. Now we're not going to trot around here, we're just going to walk. And we're going to walk straight past that same spot that she played up in and see what happens. This direction, nothing happens. Why? Because she wasn't facing this direction when the de debacklement happened. She remembers everything, this horse. So whenever she was rearing up, she was facing the other side. And it worked for her. We all scattered and she got out of having to get things done. It is reinforced to her that she can do whatever she likes, but I'm going to have to stay on and ride it out. And I can't allow her to allow that to be the way it's going to be. So how do I do that? Well, I have to change direction without her realising I'm changing direction. And she's realised it already. So I'm going to stand her in this direction. And I ask her one step at a time, walking slowly. I know that the flies are annoying because I've got flies bothering me too. I get it. But they're not just one-sided. Flies don't just stay on one side. But there could be a reason why she's upset at this side. 
So I think it's to do with the dentist. I'm pretty certain about it. As soon as she's heading towards the gate, she seems fine. But as soon as I pass the gate and then start heading towards down here, this is where she decides she is not a happy camper. Now let's see if we can get her to go past and walk through that. I'm not going to let her get away with it. So the more she keeps carrying on, the more we're going to keep going back to the same spot until she gets it. Walk on. There we go. Good girl. There we go. And she's carrying on again. So we're going to go back. So there's definitely a reason why she's angry about being over here. We just don't know yet what it is. It could have been something happened on this side while she was in here. That upset her, probably the dentist, most likely. We need to keep moving around. Now, if this takes me two weeks to walk around in circles like this, this is what I will do. I'm, I'm telling her very firmly that I'm wanting her to walk around. There we go. This is all behavioural, certain of it. Now she's decided she can walk perfectly fine around here. It's got nothing to do with anything being wrong and everything to do with psychology. She thinks, I'm just going to allow things to happen. But you see, the, the smart way of dealing with this is to allow her to make her mistakes and correct them in a decent manner. Come on. She just carried on again. I kind of wished I had a, a slightly larger round yard. Now I'm going to correct that and she can bloody well correct that. Now the thing is with her, getting cranky isn't going to solve a darn thing. What's going to solve things with her is to just walk slowly and do things slowly, step by step. Ah, she went to get up then. Good. She just went to get up and carry on. Not on. So we're going to go around until she doesn't do that. The second she doesn't do that, she's going to get a release. The release will be stopping and letting her think about it. So let's try again. Around we go. Without drama. Without incident. And as soon as we get here, she starts again. She's going to stand here. We're going to keep going back into this corner here. Good. Good. And we're going to go back into the corner until we walk, walk through it. Now this might take me a couple of weeks of consistency because it did before. She's not a horse that will just do it because she remembers it. She'll do it because she wants to do it. If she doesn't want to do it, she'll give you a hassle. She wants to go out and eat grass. I don't blame her. If I was a teenager, I'd rather be doing the things I'd want to do too. See, this time she's not giving me as much angst. She's thinking about it though, and she's probably going to try it at this point over here. The second I start there. We're not going to go any further in without going round like this, and that's it. And because she gave me trouble again, we're going round again. So that's how many times now. We've got several times we've had to go round. But I'm not having to whip the crap out of her or attack her or do anything like that. I'm just asking her to walk and I'm correcting when she's not listening. If she's getting her shits and that's fine. She can get the shits all she likes. I've got patience and a lot of it. That's what you need with a young horse, extreme patience. Getting aggressive with them will not work, ever. And she does it again. So we're gonna practice again. And this is all part of just the education after the breaking. The breaking's probably the easy bit. The education afterwards is the hard bit. It's getting them to listen every time you want them to. So you get a good horse, she's young. She's gonna defy, not quite four yet. She'll be four next month. 
So when they're four years old, they challenge. Most people don't even think about getting on them until they're after four. So, and a lot of it's to do with letting them have their teenage years carrying on and being silly, letting their mother do their job. The longer you can leave them with their mum, the better, the more they're gonna learn. At the bottom of the pecking order, and they have to respect their way back up. And it's the same with you on their back. They've got to be respectful of you. Well, they don't have to. They can, they can literally decimate you in seconds. But if you gain their respect enough, they will listen, like she's doing now. All that angst about being silly and deciding she wasn't going to go where I've asked is starting to stop. And she's going around this time. And this is the first time she's gone around without a drama. And she's increasing her pace there just a little bit, which is really good. She's understanding now. Oh, that's all you were asking me to do. When I do it, I don't get a backlash. I just get a nice smooth walk. And that's easy. It's much easier than fighting me. Whether she keeps doing it, it's a different story. I want her to do it at least another time without any, no, nah, see, she's done it again. So we're gonna go around again. And she's gonna try and test me again. She says, I'll give you one. And I'll test you with the next one. See if you really meant it. So we're going to go around again. And all this happens long before you go off cantering around the place. I can canter this horse, that's not an issue. But I want her mind to be in the right place when I do it so that she doesn't decide she's going to suddenly take off and do what she wants while I'm in the middle of cantering. What I want to do is give her a nice loose rein. Let her get in there. There we go, lovely. And we got a beautiful walk there. That was really nice. So let's try again, let's go around again. This is not hard work for her. It's, it's work, but it's not hard work. It's not dreadfully hard work. Let's see if she does it of her own volition this time without too much direction and see if she'll listen and go around without drama drama so far so good i've got a nice loose rein on her i'm steering with my feet and she's listening beautifully she's doing a great job all right so now let's change things up and let's go in the other direction and then we'll come back around again and see if she plays up next time because that's the direction she plays up in so See how she goes, we'll go into a trot this way. We'll do a trot round. Nice and slow trot. Easy, easy, easy. She stopped at that point. That's okay. Good girl. Good girl, there we go. Almost a full revolution. Almost got it. Whoop, she went to go into a little cantry thing there. And there we go. And walk, walk down. Good girl. That was really good. Now we're gonna try this direction and see what happens. See if we have problems. We're gonna start with a walk round first, just to be certain that we're not in trouble again, that we haven't forgotten what we just did half an hour work on. And it is most definitely behavioural. She's remembered at some point in time where I've allowed her for just a second to get away with something on that side, right in that spot, and she's decided she's going to keep doing it. Well, she's really learning now that I'm seriously meaning what I mean. And uh, she's nice and calm now. She feels really calm and steady. She doesn't feel off at all. She feels good. She feels comfortable. Feels like she's listening. She's got an ear forward and ear back. And then she starts the crap again. So we're gonna go back. And here we go. There we go. I'm gonna give her the loose rein again and see how she goes this time. 
walk on. Good. And this kind of work, it's hard work because it's boring. It is boring for most people would get sick and tired of doing this repetitively. But this is what you've got to do if you want to get a very dominant horse to comply and, and behave well when you need them to, which is always. 90% of the time you want, a, you want a horse that's listening to you as much as possible. They won't always 100% do it, but... So now we're going to ask for a faster walk into a small little... Uh, and this is where she says, no, I'm not going to listen. So I'm going to get her to get back there. We're going to start again. Uh, and she says, I'm going to carry on like a pork chop and that's going to make you think that something's wrong and you're going to get off me. As soon as I ask for a trot here, she starts this shit. And there's flies, there are flies around, don't get me wrong. There are flies everywhere. But that's not going to, that's not going to stop us because the flies are on the other side too. So why is it she's only complaining on one side? Well, again, where the dentist was, where she was able to rear up and get away with things. Now we're going to go this way and she's going to behave herself while we do it we hope and i'm not surprised that when we go around a couple of times it takes more than once to for her to listen and see now she's carrying on on the new spot this is another side of the spot where she was carrying on with the dentist so she's remembering every single spot she reared up on him I've got it stuck in my mind and melted into my brain. She's watching all the other horses over there. Ah, let's not do silly things. We want to end on a win here. And she says, no, nah. she's playing up where the gate is. So what we're going to do is we're going to work around the gate area. We're going to go around there. We're going to face it straight at the gate. We're going to keep spinning around until the gate becomes somewhere she doesn't want to be. And then she'll be more likely, much happier, to stay this way. And you gotta have a strong arm with this girl, she is strong. Trust me, she is stronger than me, a lot stronger. Good. And she's gonna carry on. Get up. So I'm gonna ask her to get up with a bit of a growl in my voice. I've been very kind so far. If she wants to carry on, we're gonna keep going. Remembering this is behavioral. There is no reason behind it other than she is behaving badly. She thinks that if she gets to certain points, she's remembering where I freaked out before in the past, and she's using those points where me and not just me, but the, the male dentist that knew what he was doing, uh, she, she pulled the wool out from under both of us. We had no choice, we had to do what we did. There was no getting out of it the way that was, things were situated. And in hindsight, it would have probably been better to have done a bit more training around the actual dentist coming and seeing her before trying and attempting anything. But the thing is, that's time and money. And he doesn't have time to do that when he can be doing teeth and making a lot of money as well. So, really is. Now see how this time she went round without a drama in, at a walk. Where she's becoming reluctant at a trot. Now I know she can go around without being reluctant at a trot because I've done it several times with her. So we're going to manoeuvre ourselves and let's just make sure. See, no resistance whatsoever there. Trot. As soon as I said trot, 
and we turned in that direction. So she's just going to make herself have to work 10 times harder. And I'm going to have to get hard ass on her the way that her breaker would if he was dealing with her now. He wouldn't be tolerating any of this. He'd probably be putting her into a big sweat first. He wouldn't be as patient, probably. He hasn't got time for this shit. Well, I haven't got time for it either. And this is all behavioural. So, giving her an out by, if you do the right thing, you're going to get released, is the only way to work. You don't get released until you've done the right thing. Shot. Shot. And trot. Now she's decided she wants to trot. Now she's decided she's giving in. See? Look at that. Look at that. And she's decided that is what is right. She's giving me. That took all that time. And walk. Walk. Took me all that time just to get that. So I'm going to release her for a second. I'm going to let her stand for a minute. You just saw how long that took to get that good response from her. <sighs> no one got injured. She's probably a little bit hurt with her pride at the moment because I made her move and we got what we asked for. But that's a good way to do it. And She's going to probably defy me for a couple of weeks before she gets back into the consistency and the reality of, ah, this is going to happen every, every, almost every day, five days a week, this is going to be happening, I'll get two days off. I need to think about it and I need to cooperate and work and once we're down our, well, done with our work, then things are much better. Now let's test the theory, we've given her a couple of seconds to think, sit and think about all this and she seems very relaxed and very happy. Going to see if she'll if she'll give me a trot around again as well as what she did. But I'll go the other direction first. Trot and see whether she'll listen. She started a canter then, and I didn't really want a canter. I just want a wall. Just want a trot. Wall. I know you've got a really nice canter, but I don't want a canter. So now she's starting to play up on this side now because I'm not listening. She wants to canter and thinks it'll be over and done with. Trot. If I canter her. Ah. No, trotting, walk, trotting slowly. So I'm going to rise, I'm going to not rise the trot, I'm going to sit the trot and see if that helps. And it is. It is helping. And she's relaxing. And that's good. Now I'll rise the trot and see what happens. I'm not scooping. I'm not scooping. We're not scooping. We're just trotting nicely. There we go. Good girl. Lovely. Lovely. And whoa. Now we're going to turn the other direction and see how we go. We had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning of that, but that's not too bad. And this is what you're going to really see when you really, 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 really need to, when you've got young horses, Send them to a breaker and a trainer. This is what goes on. And that's a good breaker or a good trainer who is willing to spend that time and have the patience. Others will whip the crap out of your horse and get them in line. But then what happens is if you come back to them, they come back to you and they're not responding unless someone's got a, uh, got a cr gonna crack them over the no noggin, then you've got no control. Because you you've got nothing to basically put a threat on them. So you've got to work from you, you're best to work with a trainer that doesn't threaten, a trainer that teaches, that's gentle. Firm but gentle. There's a difference between being abusive and being firm. Massive difference. Trot. I'm going to sit the trot. As uncomfortable as it feels to my... And she's cranky because she wants to... Hop. So we're going to sit the trot. This is the way we had problems before. Come 
my boobs are going everywhere and they hurt because I don't have a bra on, silly me. But that's okay. She's kind of missed the corner. So she's trying to pull this shit again. Try. Trot, good, trot, good, trot, good, good girl. Trusting you. Trotting, lovely. She's doing a great job right now. One more go and then we're going to give her a break and walk, walk. Uh, I didn't mean walk now. I shouldn't have said that. Okay. Going to go back one more time. One more, one more round. One more round and we're done. Good girl. I'm very mindful though of the fact that she's trying to pull up at that gate. Yep, get up. She's thinking if she goes really super fast that the world will be finished with. There we go. Now she's relented again. She's understood me. She's trying to get out of that one, so we'll go around one more. Good girl. Good girl. All the way. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to seat back and I'm going to let her slow down and walk. Good. We'll do one walk around as a, as a, as a reinforcement. I'm extremely happy with her behaviour today. She's actually far better behaved today than she has been. So it just goes to show that she's starting to really understand things and I'm going to bring her back in here and I'm going to stop right about here good girl good job walk on so I'm pleased with that and anyone who was watching it takes a long time and if you've got a young horse or a horse that you, you're not used to and you don't know what to do this is what you've got to do you got to keep on, uh, if they'll test you, and a young one like her, and she's a dominant young horse, she'd probably test more than most horses would. But the fact that she's, we've gotten past that hiccup that she didn't like, and that's a good thing. So we're going to release her now from her work gear. And she's going to be extremely happy about it. Good girl, thank you. But I'm glad that today I didn't ignore my instincts, which was, this is just her taking the mickey out of you. And you've got to let her, let her understand that there's a definite consequence for, you know, naughty and silly behaviours. So, but anyway, she did really well. And the consequence for that is just, you've got to work a bit harder and a bit longer. The sooner that you actually listen and behave all that energy could have been finished with so but thank you guys for watching and uh i'll catch you another time